Good morning on the 26th of December and welcome to the Daily Post. We begin with the uh, scripture for the morning which comes from Psalm 5 and verse 2. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. If you're reading the Bible in a year, today you need to read the book of Haggai and Revelation chapter 17. Some facts of the day. It was courage, faith, endurance and a dogged determination to surmount all obstacles that builds bridges. Don't let go of your dreams. If you have determination and belief in your dreams, you will succeed in spite of your desire to let go. If you doubt you can accomplish something, then you can't accomplish it. You have to have confidence in your ability and then be tough enough to follow through. The motivational thought for the day. There are two kinds of people who never amount to much. Those who cannot do what they are told and those who can do nothing else. On this day, in 1620, the Mayflower Pilgrims came ashore in Plymouth Bay, traditionally thought to be a Plymouth Rock, Massachusetts. In 1874, Boxing Day was officially recognised in Britain as a bank holiday. In 1898, on this day, the Curies announced the existence of radium, which they had discovered a little while earlier. In 1943, in German World War II, the German battleship Scharfhorst was sunk by the Royal Navy in the North Sea during the Battle of North Cape. In 1973, two Skylab 3 astronauts walked in space for a record seven hours. 1974, British MP John Stonehouse was detained in Australia after attempting to fake his own death by leaving a pile of his clothes on a beach. And in 2004, a massive tsunami of 9.3 uh, caused damage and killed thousands in India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Sri Lanka and Thailand. It's estimated that 230,000 people died as a result of this event. In 2006, on this day, the Hengchun earthquake with a 7.1 magnitude struck Taiwan. The personal story of the day, changes that work. Actor Sylvester Stallone was applauded for his strongman movie roles as Rocky and Rambo. But what is he really like in his personal life? During an interview, he honestly admitted, quote, if I were watching a home movie of my life, I would shake my head in despair and wonderment. It's a comedy of errors. Close quote. Suppose a movie was made of your life or mine. Would it reveal not only errors and poor choices, but also a sinful person who doesn't even act like a follower of Christ on some occasions? Would we be ashamed of some scenes? Would we be motivated, as Stallone says he was, to shift our values and start paying attention to, quote, relationships and putting someone else first, close quote. Jesus wants to be the someone else in our lives, who we put first. We can read that in Matthew chapter 6 and verses 24 and 33. But how do we do that? It starts with confession of any sin that is between us and him, and then experiencing the Lord's cleansing and forgiveness, as we read in Psalm 32 and verse 5. Then we are gradually changed by him through the work of the Holy Spirit and by the word of God. Read Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, 
and Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. If we make our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ our first priority, he will make us into the kind of people he wants us to be. Read Philippians chapter 2 and verses 3 to 8. The power of the Holy Spirit cannot be limited. The devotional thoughts of the day. <coughs> the first is entitled The Rebuke of Last Resort. The scripture from 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 15 with references from 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 1 to 12. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. In some circles it is common to refer to practices like the use of marijuana and prostitution as victimless crimes. This indicates a belief that these practices are a matter of individual choice, since those who engage in such actions are the only ones who suffer the consequences they should not be penalised for choices such as a lifestyle like that. In reality, however, there is no such thing as a victimless crime. All individual activities and actions affect the entire community. This is doubly true of the church, where each member belongs to all the others. You read Romans chapter 12 and verse 5. Like the physical body, the spiritual health of one member of the body of Christ affects the other members. In today's passage, Paul compares sin to yeast because it has the potential to work its way through the entire congregation. The proof of this can be seen in the Corinthians' tolerance of the kind of sexual immorality that shocked their unsaved neighbours. The presence of such a sin among one of their members should have been enough to silence their boasting. Instead of thinking so highly of themselves, the Corinthians should have grieved and taken steps to discipline the guilty party. In this case, the appropriate form of discipline was to expel the offender from the congregation, as Paul tells us in verse 2. Because he couldn't repent. And that was the main reason. Such a response may seem harsh and unloving, but it has the goal of redemption and reconciliation. Expulsion from the congregation underscores the seriousness of sin and gives the offender an opportunity to learn from the consequences of disobedience. The kind of intervention spoken of in this passage is really the last stage of a process of confrontation and rebuke described by Jesus in greater detail in Matthew chapter 18 and verses 15 to 20. It begins with a private appeal and becomes increasingly more public as the sinning believer fails to respond. The final stage is expulsion from the church. Sadly, Fear of legal action, the conviction that such things are private matters best left between the individual and God, and the willingness of many other congregations to welcome those who are under such discipline, have kept many churches from fulfilling this important obligation. The Corinthian church had to publicly rebuke the sinning believer described in today's passage because they had failed to confront him in private. Is there someone in your life who needs a word of loving confrontation? If so, think about what you will say in advance and prayerfully share your concerns with that person. God may use your rebuke to move them to repentance. The second thought is entitled The Guidance of the Holy Spirit and the scripture is from Acts chapter 8 and verse 29. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and join thyself to his chariot. Here, as in many other passages in Acts, we see the Spirit guiding the disciples. He leads, he speaks, and he forbids. The Holy Spirit is a living person who works with us. He is our helper. 
In this passage, the Holy Spirit describes in details what Philip should do. Go near and join this chariot. This is not some vague, non-committing, general statement, but rather detailed help in a particular situation. Some people think this might result in our not thinking for ourselves. But this is not the case. The Holy Spirit is a partner. He does not think instead of us, but together with us. Here we have an important situation. Through the faith of this one Ethiopian, the gospel would reach a new country. Therefore, the Spirit's guidance was very important. The same is true of your life. There are countless important choices and decisions to be made. There are many things you are to do. What is right? When, how and with whom will these things be done? The Holy Spirit knows and he wants to communicate to you and lead you in all these decisions. Begin to rely more heavily on his counsel in your life. Do not claim authority over anyone in the name of the Spirit. Many make claims with the view of dominating others. The Holy Spirit is a serving spirit. Its directions are service-based. Do not be afraid to make mistakes. He will help you. You need him. You cannot do what God wants you to do in your own power. God's assignments require the resources of the Holy Spirit. And only in him and through him can you find what you need to serve God. The Holy Spirit has a precision, a long-term plan and an ability to guide that you do not have. Or allow him to guide you, take time to be with him, and you will understand his voice. That will be the greatest asset you have in life. Thoughts of the day? Your ears never stop growing, no matter how old you are. Ear, ear. The thumbnail grows the slowest, while the middle fingernail grows the fastest. The closing thought for the day, a truly wise man will learn from another man's mistakes. Thanks for joining us this morning. We hope the Daily Post has been helpful and uh, will uplift you through the day. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning. Have a blessed day. Bye for now.